Welcome back to another Micro Soldering Wednesday. My name is Derek and today I'm going to be going over an iPad Pro 10.5 that isn't turning on. There's obvious damage to the port and the screen has a little crack in it. But beyond that, I'm not exactly sure what's wrong with it. My goal today is to show you how to replace the charge port on this model of iPad. And hopefully we can get it working. So let's get into the video. All right, so here we've got an iPad, it's a 10.5, and we can definitely see some damage to the charge port. When I go to plug it in, we're actually drawing a 0.6. No image up here, so we might be dealing with more than just a charge port issue. Maybe there's something going on with the display or backlight. I just don't see any life out of it just yet. Looking at it, we've got a crack here in the corner, and I see some black tape, the double-sided tape. Kind of here so I think someone's opened this before so I'm pretty sure it's gonna be somewhat easy to open yeah I can almost see I can almost see a small gap yeah look at that let's see real quick yep look at that okay so someone's definitely been in here before because this should never open this easy I'm still gonna take my time because I don't want to make it worse it should never be this easy to open but I don't mind that one bit and try to make sure that this corner stays intact. All right, looks like one glass shard is gonna stay behind, but that's okay. What's important on this device is the data, not necessarily the cosmetics behind it. So uh, that explains why we're not seeing anything. Someone has still isolated the battery. <laughs> Let's just pop this out. It's like a playing card. I'm hoping it was reconnected properly. We don't have a battery screw, so I'm just going to hold it down here and let's plug it in and see if we get any life. Nothing there. Okay. So let's uh, take this apart and see if we can figure out what's, what's going on. So let's get our screwdriver and carefully remove these two screws. And I'm just going to see if these display connectors were properly connected and that popped normal. That one's normal. That one felt weird and that one is okay. So I'm not sure there. Well, it might still be okay, but let's take a look here and see if we can see anything weird. Okay, the shield's never been removed because there's no rippling to it. They tend to ripple a little bit, even if you get them off really well. These stickers have never been pulled up. So I don't think this board was ever taken out. Could be that the pins were damaged with a playing card under the battery connector. So let's take a look there. And let's just take this board out because we're going to work on the port anyway. And this one's really, really uh, easy to work with once the board's out. So we'll start by removing these 10 screws. And then we've got four more down here. Now that we got those 10 screws up, let's go ahead and gently lift up on this. If you kind of pull on it while lifting, it tends to not want to wrinkle. You can just pull it up like this, but then it'll really bend. So if you kind of pull up in that direction while, pull, while, while giving it a little tension, it tends to pop up and not bend too much. So when you go to put it back, there's really little to no warpage. All right, one thing I like to do when I have a completely dead iPad is just, just go ahead and look at all of these coils. Just kind of touch them with my fingernail. Sometimes they'll just get so hot that they'll pop off. I don't think we've got an issue there. I think we just have an issue with the with the port, so. Go ahead and disconnect the coax cables here and we'll lift that up peel back the stickers for these speakers and most of the time it pops them up for you we'll bend those little wires out of the way and then we'll disconnect these four connectors here at the top and i guess i'll remove the camera because it's wanting to come out anyway and this one and then we don't want to forget this teeny connector here on the side now we'll get some isopropyl alcohol and a spudger, and we're going to wedge it under the logic board here at the top, and we're gently put some tension on the board, just like that, and then we'll add some isopropyl alcohol along the edge of the border of the motherboard, all the way down, make sure those connectors aren't holding it back, and then we're not flexing the board too much, letting the alcohol do most of the work. Like you can see, I'm literally just pushing with one finger here. Okay, give it a little wiggle here, and it'll pop right out. All right, so taking a look here at the battery connector, I can actually see that it was pried up almost out of the, of the frame. That should be more flush. So the reason it might not have been showing anything was probably that. But as you can clearly see, 
that charge port is not looking good. Now there's a couple ways to replace the charge port. You peel up this black sticker, you can replace this entire little flux, or what I'm gonna show you today is quickly soldering on a new charge port, just this piece, not the whole flex. It's really quite simple. And while we're at it, I'm also gonna make sure that we can get this guy flush again, because that is not gonna be making good contact with the with the battery. You can kind of see it's like up at an angle. It's not flush, and it's not flat. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is here on the back, I'm just gonna make sure that none of this glue is gonna get in the way. I'm gonna add some flux. Got the temperature set at 350 degrees Celsius. Just like that. Now, one of the reasons this works is because you've got on the bottom here, you've got a metal a metal base. So it heats up evenly and helps you desolder fairly easily. And here we've got some replacement ports. As you can see, there's a major difference between <laughs> the damaged one and the new one. I'm going to take some 158 solder paste. You can use solder wire if you want. I just prefer solder paste. And we will put that down. You could go up to 183, but I wouldn't recommend going down to 138 just because of how weak the 138s typically are. We still have some of the uh, glue that's kind of in the way. So I'm gonna try to break that up with my iron as we also go ahead and add a little melt and basically prep these pads to receive uh, the new port. We'll just wait for the iron to heat up enough and we'll start to move this solder around and then it'll start to flow once it's up to temperature. And I'm going to carefully try to also just use the iron to scrape at and remove any of the glue. Definitely want to have some type of ventilation here because does not those fumes can't be good for you. <laughs> just taking our time to really get rid of all of the glue so there's nothing in the way. There we go. Doesn't look pretty right now. But it will in a second once we add some flux and clean it up. So we're going to add some flux. All right, now we need to take some wick and we're going to clean out those through holes. We'll add solder at the end. Always helps to add a bit of flux onto your wick. Now suck the solder up and in. Okay. Take a bit of isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip and let's clean off all of the flux and the glue. Now there's a little bit more glue here. So I'm gonna see if I can just scrape that off with the tweezers. Probably wasn't gonna get in the way, but it's just one more, th one less thing I have to worry about. And one final cleaning here. Okay, so we're gonna add some flux. It's a nice light coating. Smear it with my finger there. And we'll come in with the new port and do the same thing. Add some flux, really get everything well coated with, with flux so that it doesn't oxidize at all with the heat. I want the solder to really wanna stick to all of these pins. Okay, coming again from below with the hot air. I'm actually gonna make an adjustment here with my clamp. So we get less movement out of the flex. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna lower my temperature now instead of having it all the way up at the 360, 70, wherever I had it. And I'm gonna come down to 290. I'm gonna line everything up nicely here. Let's take a look at that and see if we like the way that it looks. So when we zoom down in the microscope, we can clearly see that every single leg has solder on it, running up to it. And when you have it looking like this in the front, you know that the back is doing the exact same. So I know that we're not gonna have any bridging. They're pretty dead on as far as how center they are. Now we just need to add some solder to the through holes here. So what I'm gonna do is we'll clamp this back up. I'm gonna peel back this little sticker here, and this one as well. 
We're going to try not to ruin it because it's a metallic sticker. This is designed to help ground things out. We're just kind of trying to move it out of the way without shredding it. All right, so now we'll just come in with some solder. We'll add some solder to each one of those legs. We'll flip it over. We'll make sure it came through all the way. And it's on the legs, but to reinforce it a little bit more, I'm just going to add some flux to both sides. And we're going to try to left hand this and pull it up through. Not pretty, but it's structurally sound. That's better. Easier with my right hand. Okay. Yep, I'm liking that much better. Okay, so on to the other issue. We'll flip this guy over, and here we're gonna, you can definitely see it now, how, how it's been pulled up. That gap here, we need to close this gap. There's a little gap on this side too. So what I'm gonna do is we'll pull up this, or we'll just pull up this sticker. You can actually see, let's take a look at this side too. Okay, so you can actually see the, the hole from that getting pried up. You can see we're broken right through. So to fix this, we'll just add a little bit of flux. I'm gonna get a pair of my thicker tweezers so I can squeeze. And we're gonna put some pressure on there. And we're gonna try to melt the solder. It's not wanting to pull up and through. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder paste. Give it another good squeeze. All right, so now we can see that we've closed that gap up on that side. Oh, this also makes sense. So something that I just noticed as well, you can see the height difference between this set of pins here and this set of pins here. They've gotten squished down. So let's see if we can't just give them a little bit of a, a bend. This happens when people put in a pry tool to isolate the battery without realizing that they're doing the damage. So that's why I always use a plastic sheet of some sort, not a plastic pick or something else that could potentially damage it. Okay, that's closer. There we go, I like that side. Don't wanna break them off because if I break them, that means I have to replace the connector and although that's not a hard thing to do, I just don't wanna have to, you know? Okay, yeah, that is much, closer in fact it's just above the other one which means perfect got the port on soldered on well fixed the battery issue let's go connect this up i don't see any connector damage i'm just going to give the board a once over just to make sure i don't see anything i don't like any holes and diodes or anything weird like that i think that what happened is most likely whoever was working on this before <laughs> pried up on the battery i don't know exactly if they were they were going to try to do a charge port repair or something but then they noticed it wasn't turning on so they gave up and it was because they damaged it so using something like this thin plastic to go here in between the battery and the board is what i recommend so we'll go ahead and slide this board back in making sure all of these connectors are out of our way and we'll connect them all back up there we go, those are all connected up there. Don't forget this little one right here. There we go. Down here at the bottom, connect up the speakers and fold back over their stickers. Put back that sticker down. And we can connect up the antennas here with the coax connectors, just like that. And we can put back all of the screws for the charge port. And reconnect the camera that we took out earlier. Now I will take the time to go and replace all of the adhesive because this is obviously not <laughs> holding together. Uh, but for now, uh, let's go ahead and test everything out. So I'm gonna go and put the plate back on. We'll put all 10 screws back. Yeah, the last screw. I'm gonna go ahead and connect up the display. I really hate how awkward this model is to connect. It's like no room. All right, so we will go ahead and install the bracket here because I don't want these popping back up. It's always so awkward. I used to have a mini screwdriver, but I can't find it. That would allow me to go in here really easily. The hard part is getting the screw to go down straight when you're holding it, the screwdriver at an angle, but you can find it and it'll work. This screw, it's not wanting to go down straight. It goes down, it's not straight. So there we go. Okay, so we will now set the screen off to the side here. 
And I don't have, I'm gonna have to find a screw for this guy, but we'll just hold it down now with our finger. We'll plug it in. We're still pulling 0.6 over there. I'm gonna have to see if I can figure out what's going on with this guy. Could be a charging IC issue. Could be a motherboard issue. Who knows? All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna test a TriStar real quick. We're going to run a quick test and see. Testing dock. The dock is okay. That's good. At least we've done that correctly. Testing TriStar. All right, so it passes, but it didn't re register the battery. So I wonder if we have a case of just having a bad battery. There is a is a weird spot here and here, but nothing to indicate. Like there's no swelling that I can see on this battery. That doesn't mean it hasn't gone bad, but it could be something that simple. I'm gonna chalk it up to that, but at least, uh, but at least I've been able to show how to replace the charge port and isolate another issue that was caused and fix it so i'm going to run a couple more tests just to make sure it's not just making it's not that it's just not making good contact because that could be all it is is just these pins you know i'm going to do some tests there but yeah that wraps up at least what i wanted to show in this video all right just to test <laughs> with another display just to make sure there's not an issue with it as well go ahead and yeah, see no image as well so it's not an issue with the display, which is, which is good. I mean, it's still not working. But. So as you can tell, this iPad still needs a bit of work, but I was able to show you how to replace the charge port. Now, after doing some further testing, I'm pretty sure I know what more this iPad needs. So it's quite possible that I show you the solution in a future video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, or if there's something that you'd like to see in a future video, leave it down there as well. Hopefully you learned something. Thanks a ton for watching. And we'll see you tomorrow for Tips and Tricks Thursday.